I'm looking for Chloe. But I suppose I could sit down here and talk to you. I like your trainers. I'm Kerry, by the way. Well, it's quite funny because people always ask me about my disability and what my childhood was like. Um, I think they imagine it was quite horrendous growing up with one hand, but actually it wasn't something that I was really aware of. I was made to wear a prosthetic arm. The doctors advised my parents that that would be the best thing for me. They thought it would help me to use a knife and fork and to get dressed quickly. And I really rebelled against that and used to cut the fingers off and draw tattoos on it and try and lose it and hide it in cupboards all around my school. Well, my time at school was quite unusual really because um, I'm severely dyslexic so I couldn't read or write until I was about 10. I did really struggle with uh, maths and English and reading but I had a, a really wonderful teacher when I was about seven who was very patient with me and she used to give her lunch times up and come and sit with me and I would narrate a story to her so I would say the words of a story and she would very patiently write it down. I still felt like I was achieving. I never felt like I was stupid. I never felt like I was failing because I had people believing in me who knew that I was intelligent. And I do think, you know, a great teacher can really make you. I was quite naughty at secondary school, so I'd always end up in detention. I just saw it as a bit of a social occasion. I didn't really figure out that you had to work hard until kind of near the end when I suddenly had exams and I thought, right, I better, um, try and do some work now. I was really excited when I got the job at CBBS. It's just so much fun and it's, you know, it's a big kind of opportunity to play and to be free and to be very childlike, but it's also a job, so I get paid, which is even better. So after I'd been working at CBBS for about six weeks, um, there was a knock on my door and I answered the door and there was a journalist on my doorstep who said, I want to interview you about all of the complaints. At that point, I became aware that people were complaining about my disability. It was adults who were frightened that my disability might upset some of their children or give them nightmares or just raise very uncomfortable questions. As a parent, I would always welcome the opportunity to talk about a difference, whether it was a cultural difference or a disability. So I would hope that my disability would be that platform for other parents. It wasn't against me as a person, it was just a prejudice against the way that I look because I've got one hand. So once I knew that, you know, it, it didn't become personal and it didn't become hurtful. If we were used to seeing disabled people all the time, you know, blind people, deaf people, people with missing limbs. If that was a really regular occurrence, there never would have been a fuss. I've been very lucky in my life and met some really fantastic disabled people who have had far less supportive families than me and come from much harder backgrounds who are far more resilient than me and, you know, have really achieved amazing things. Certainly my friends have been the people that I've always turned to at any moment where I've been a bit uncertain or a bit down. I think so long as you know who you are and you're true to yourself and if you have a dream or if you have a goal of something you want to achieve and you stay focused on that, you don't really need to worry about what anyone else thinks. There's always going to be negativity, you know, there's always going to be someone saying, no, you can't do that or, you know, how do you think you're going to achieve this? Whilst those questions are worth listening to, you don't need to dwell on them and you don't need to hold on to them. And if you stay focused on your dream and don't let anyone else's idea of what you are or who you are crush what you want to do and what you aspire to, then you'll be all right and you, you will achieve it. You just have to work hard. Do you know, I can smell cupcakes and I love cupcakes. I think I'm going to go and get one. I'll see you later.